the task force into a single zone and take up enough because nobody wants to be put in that situation. In the event where somebody is going to commit a crime and no police officers are present, what does your side do? So in terms of this, the government has to protect the individuals and the government has to protect victims. My third argument, I want to tell you how opposition adheres to that government responsibility. The third argument, government sets a bad precedent and, and it's actually shifting the burden on individuals. Two levels of analysis. First of all, delegates responsibility to the private sphere. Second of all, why that's so bad. First of all, delegates responsibility to the private sphere. We believe this is arbitrarily and harmful. Why? Because it is the government's responsibility to protect individuals. And we believe that the government shouldn't be forcing individuals to take that upon their own, their own hands. My second and most important analysis is this. When it comes to matters about universal health, universal social values, like security, when it comes to a matter where you can decide whether to take that person's life or that matters, we believe that matter should not be left for the individual to decide. I'm thinking of why. Because based on individual's mechanisms, based on individual's discretion, that line is an incoherent, that line may differ. Individual actions are, are going to differ. We believe when it comes to these matters, it is the government who has to have a universal and a government has to have a coherent policy as to in which terms and in which mechanisms it can intervene. My third and more important analysis is this. Because in the status quo, their model delegates that responsibility upon individual's hands. Because their model, their model makes governments think they have done enough. Why? Because civilians can also possess guns. Because people can respond when a robber comes into your house with a gun. That means the government, that delivers the government to thinking that's done enough for society. Therefore, it deters government to making further policies, more specific policies to deter crimes in the first place. Because Korea and Japan does not recognize our citizens' civilians' right, civilians' are right or right to possess arms in the first place. That's why you have still such extensive regulations when it comes to the matter of security. Whereas their policy or whereas the status quo, the United States of America has a relatively lenient policy when it comes to security because it allows for rigid anti distress, because it allows for individuals to support the US government. Mr. Man Speaker, when it comes to shaping a healthier society, when it comes to shaping a safer society, violence and insights of violence, their population is very close to those. Thank you. I thank the second opposition speaker and now would like to invite her opposition speaker to conclude the government's case.
criminal comes to rock him. But there are a lot of things that will cross the person's mind before or on a, on a decision whether he wants to shoot the person or not. We don't think it's reasonable that a person will just out of, out of the blue shoot a person that wants to mark him or wants to rock him. These are all the things that, that we include in our model. Training and uh, pressure training and how we react to circumstances when we give you a gun and the random checkers that we'll have. Because they are still liable to the law. If anything goes wrong, they are going to be held accountable. They are going to be brought to court. We think that this is a fair enough deterrent to people who not misuse the power that we are going to give them. Have a seat, sir. Let's take an example of a bank robbery. They wanted to use this example as well. At best case scenario, when a bank robbery happens and a, grand, and a gang of criminals go in, the only person that might have a firearm is the security guard. And uh, you know, at that period of time, when we wait for the police to come, can, what can happen? Just imagine if, the, if all the citizens or most of the citizens in that bank had firearms. How hard would it be for that gang of criminals, which are only five people, but are being taken over by 30 people that have the same gun that is, uh, only five criminals have, and it, it obviously would be harder for these criminals to commit that crime and for them to escalate the situation that is already present in the bank. And this allows for even maybe for the police to, uh, to arrive at, uh, at a, a given period of time for them to reduce the amount of violence that will happen. Before I move on to my second level, the first issue, sure, sir. How does that point in any way help your case? The proposition has already defined that they're not in support of open or concealed carry. No, it's it's not a part of open concealed carry, but you obviously know, as as we characterized you, as criminals that will premeditate their crime. Because bank robberies and all our higher level crimes are usually premeditated by gangs that do it most of the time. So these are all circumstances where criminals would think about how many are uh, you know how many people sure. in the in the in the bank would have a gun or how many people or who should I have how many guns should I bring when I go and rob that bank? In these circumstances, it's unexpected for them to think that everyone in that bank would have a gun. But the actual truth is that everyone has a gun and they now and they now lose the battle to the people that actually have the gun. Have a seat. The second level to this is when the government feels complacent. They told us the reason as to why they don't want to leg legitimize the right to our own firearms is because now the government will feel complacent and they think that they have been doing enough. First of all, obviously every government would want to protect the people and they have to protect the people and they need to. The principle behind this is only uh, on, will only become uh, practical when we outsource the responsibility to people when we cannot be in that circumstance, when the government cannot cater for everyone because just simply because we don't have enough police and our, our law and forces, just simply because we don't have enough ambulances in this case, why is it why is it wrong for us to create a safer society? Why is this better? Because it's better allocation of resources. This means that if uh, if lower crimes happen in society, we can send in more law enforcers to places that actually need it, like red uh, like red light districts, or places where crimes are, are, are happening perpetually or happen a lot. And because the crimes decrease, we can send in more ambulances. We can send in more law, law enforcers to take off this uh, situation where they need it the most and reduce the other parts of society that can uh, that uh, crimes won't happen anymore. Let's move on to the second issue of whether are guns the reason as to why people commit crimes. But before I go on, sure, madam. People post a threat, as you said. But where did the gun that people post a threat come from? Yeah, the gun that people post the threat from was the intention of you committing a crime. This is what I'm going to talk about in my second issue. Are the guns the reason as to why people commit crimes? The first thing that they told us is that criminals now will have more access. Number one, people don't become criminals out of nowhere. In majority of cases, it's because you're poor, it's because you're below the, uh, the below the budget of uh, because you're poor, and it's because you it's your last option, and you need to commit a crime. With our very tight regulation, one of the criteria of having a gun is the social status that you have. That means if you own a if you own a business, or if you own a store, or if you're very rich of a person, and you are one of the targets of criminals in the first place, you will it's easier for you to get a gun, or it's more legitimate that because of your social status, you will get a gun in the circumstance. This means that a poorer person might need a gun lesser than a person who owns a store that might be robbed, or a person that owns a company, for instance. These are all circumstances that we will include in our model that they never understood from its simple logic. Have a seat. But even if best case scenario, people misuse their power, what are we standing for? We are more than happy to punish individuals that misuse their guns or rights that we have given them. Why so? Because this also will send a communal message to other uh, gun owners or to other firearm owners that you know that I cannot misuse the power and the right that people have given me. We think that the law will do fine in this circumstance. The second level to this issue is the social tension. They told us that now people will pick fights with uh, their neighbors or with anyone in society just because I have a gun and because they feel full of themselves. There are three groups of people that we have to address in today's debate. First group is that people will, who people in society or criminals that will definitely commit a crime 
and they need a gun to commit their crime. This means that even without our policy, they will get it from the black market. But in our policy, they, uh, we have no regulation as to who got, uh, who got the gun from us and who got the gun from the black market. So it's easier for evidence, it's easier for us to track them down. The second group of people that we have to identify is people that may commit a crime one day when they are at the store because of the criminal that approached them and because of the criminal that wanted to rob them. These are, these are the, this is the majority that we're talking about. People that may commit a crime walking down the street one uh, may shoot a person down or may use it for self-defense uh, when he's walking down the street one day because the criminal approaches. This is the majority that we want to protect. Because number one, not only they have to feel safe, we have to give them the right to feel safe in these circumstances and we have to allow them to exercise that right to feel safe in society. Then the third, people that we have, uh, third group of people that we have to address is the people that will, might never face a crime. There were people that will never use the guns in the circumstances. They are not part of the way, but the majority is one that we have to protect. We think that if the outsource of that responsibility by the government will create a safer society, we don't see a problem with that because crime is not problem. My guns, people kill people, not guns. We're very proud. Oh, 